Paula Gallego enter in the project one week and a half before starting shooting because we have a problem with the, the other actress that uh, it's supposed to make the role. We had a problem like uh, one and a half weeks ago and we're starting like three days of searching, crazy searching with people uh, to, 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 to write, to, to, to have the correct uh, girl for the, for the character. And she entered one week and a half. It's crazy. David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking to Fernando Gonzalez Gomez, the co-director of The Passenger, which is coming to theaters on June 3rd, 2022, and a DVD and on demand on June 28th, 2022. We're going to talk to him right now. While you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. Hello, David. Hello, Fernando. How are you? Fine. Thank you very much. How are you? Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Fernando Gonzalez Gomez, the co-director of The Passenger, which is coming to American Theaters on June 3rd, 2022, and to DVD and On Demand on June 28th, 2022. It is an indie horror film that has some good practical effects, some very interesting characters, and you know, kind of a, a mix of an entertaining and stressful road trip. It was, it was a fun watch. It was a very kind of well-done indie film, and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching our film. Of course, of course. I guess... You know, the first question is, you know, how did you get involved in this? I know you have a co-director who I think also wrote the story. So I don't know if you've worked with uh, that person before or if this was just something that came across your desk. You're like, yes, I want to make like an indie horror film. How did you get, get involved in this one? Well, the, the, the name is Raul Cerezo. That is my co-director. And he had the script and the project of The Passenger like a very long time into a box because no one want to, wants to invest uh, in Spain for the for the movie, I say that uh, all the things that now the audience love from the movie are the things that the producers say no, it's not going to work. <laughs> 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 then uh, Raúl watched my first feature film. My first feature film was a standard. It's a very small movie, black comedy, no genre. It's like the Coen Brothers was born in a small village in Spain or something like this, <laughs> mixing characters and, 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 and dead bodies. And uh, he said, okay, Fernando, you made with this production company and, and it feels that you have a big freedom to do whatever you want. And I said, yes, it, it was. And then he proposed me to, to, to do a co-direction and present the movie, the script, the project to the same producers. Um, La Dalia Films uh, that produce a standard and they say yes and we jump into a pool with no water together and, <laughs> and we direct the movie together uh, because probably we have uh, different choices I mean in movies and but uh, we have the same uh, way of view how to uh, tell a story or how to organize uh, uh, the, the, the shooting proceed and where, where we are going to put the camera. We, we, we really like to study a lot of this and, and then we, we have the same way to work. And then we work together and that's the result. Very cool. And you know, speaking of the camera, I, there were some really, really great camera shots. I think my favorite is there's, there's a couple that happen where you have like a very very close view of the front seat passenger, and then like a, a darker kind of yeah, yeah, view. yeah, yeah. I loved those scenes. Like, uh, I guess whose idea? Maybe it was a combination. And how did you do that? Because I imagine it must have been tough in this cramped van. I don't know if you had like a special mock-up done or, or what. Well, first of all, you you have to take in count that we had two bands, two okay. nessas. One was the real one that was driving by the roads and all the stuff, and the other one was like a legal. Uh, was uh, uh, like one meter uh, mm -hmm. meter, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Europe, <laughs> one, <laughs> one meter uh, longer and one meter more uh, like uh, wider, uh, uh, one meter and one meter plus, and we can drop off the laterals, the top, the front, and everything, and then we can put the the camera wherever we want with the crane. Uh, and these shots you are talking about uh, was made with a split diopter. Uh, like the one that uh, Brian De Palma used a lot in the in, in, in their production is uh, is uh, is this uh, lens that is uh, half lens is uh, half one focus oh. distance and the other half lens have another focus distance. Then at the same time you have focus the front and, and the background. Yeah. Then you, we chose this because in in this kind of uh, 
conversation in, in, in this uh, sequence. Uh, we, we, we would like this, this pressure from the back to the front and even the distance between the front, the world of the front of the, of the band and the world of the back behind the, the, the crystal. No? Uh, That's our, our idea, uh, to use this, this kind of, of, of resources. I love those because it was, it was such an interesting shot. It was such an interesting thing to see. And then also it just introduced a lot of tension when, even if it was a normal conversation, when you just have that type of a focus, you're really kind of paying attention to what they're saying and what's happening. You're always kind of looking to see what else is going on. So I thought that some, was- some, Something is going to happen. I mean, exactly. we are telling something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. Normally these resources is used like a, like it's just like a, in small moments, like a, you're focusing something here and something there, and then that's all. But we use a lot because we use only these two shots uh, during all the conversation. Then we, re we remember talking with Nacho Aguilar, the DOP, and the guys from the camera team saying, you are going to use a split diopter in a conversation only and we say, yes, go for it. <laughs> that's it. That, that's a perfect choice. I love it. Yeah, I could definitely yeah. see that in maybe some sort of thriller when a big revelation is happening. You kind of want to see both people. But yeah, no, it was it was a yeah, great way yeah. to tell the story. And, and like you said, it did definitely kind of introduce the two worlds, I guess, the front seat and the back seat in a very, very yeah. nice way. That's it. That's it. Um, and so, you know, I guess... Speaking of this film and those conversations, I loved the cast. I especially loved uh, the, the person who played Blasco, Ramiro Blas, and also Marta uh, Pala Gallego. Where did you find yeah. them? Like, they were they were both such interesting characters, and they had such a really great, strange chemistry throughout the film. I really liked Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but, you know, you're gonna, I, I'm going to tell you, uh, Paula Gallego entered in the project one week and a half before starting shooting, because we have a problem with the, the other actress that uh, it's supposed to make the role. We had a problem like uh, one and a half weeks ago, and we're starting like three days of searching, crazy searching with people uh, to, 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 to write, to, to, to have the correct uh, girl for the, for the character. And she entered one week and a half. It's crazy. Wow. It's crazy. She came, she came from a TV serial in Spain that, uh, it's been in a, in a prime time, like, I don't know, 20 years, something like this. Okay, you know, this kind of TV series that are always in the TV series. And she was working there since she was eight to oh, wow. she was 16. And then eight years TV. Then she's like this. Uh, because she, she has all this... Um, all this way of view the production, she's fast uh, memorizing the dialogues, and, and this is why it works. If, if not, it was impossible. And Ramiro, Ramiro Blas was involved in the when, when we started. Uh, I made with Ramiro my short film uh, Down Under, and then also he participated with a small uh, role in my first feature film. She's a very friend of mine. I presented to to him to. To Raul, Raul in the first steps was well a little bit worried about because he's Argentinian. Uh, then he's playing a role from Spain, and the accent is really different. And he make a highly work to make a, a Spanish accent and not oh. Argentinian one, because it's very. I mean, if you talk with Ramiro, it's a very, very, very Argentinian accent, crazy Argentinian accent, and then he modified a lot in order to be a Spanish one, with an Argentinian father, okay, because in the moment, <laughs> it told, it, it's something that you can hear, but only if you are a Spaniard. But, uh, well, it's, it's crazy good, the, the chemistry, and it was really lucky to have these, these, these two main characters with us. Yeah, for sure. And I, I love the, the comment on the, the Spanish accent because obviously it's not something I would have picked up, but that's amazing that he kind of went through that much effort to, to fix it. But then there was that little hit, like you said, he has a, an Argentinian father, so his Argentinian can come out here and there. When, when yes, he... here you have the hey, audience. Here you have the explanation exactly. <laughs> if something happens. Very smart writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's um, and, and speaking of his character, I like. I, I really liked him. He was very interesting character because at the start you know you don't you're not supposed to like him very much but then as the journey continues his you know i guess sarcastic and playful side come out uh what was that the script or was that 
you know, uh, Ramiro's just kind of playing with the character or maybe some combination of the two? Was, was, was the script, was the script. The, the script was really, really well written by Luis Sanchez Polak. Was like the 12th version, the one that we <laughs> shot. And was uh, we, we work a lot, even with Ramiro. Eh? Ramiro proposed a lot of things, like how he moves. It's, he's, he's crazy good in, in this uh, composition of the character. But the dialogue, the dialogues was crazy good, write it down by, by Luis. Uh, then uh, with the, the this text and Ramiro was the, 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 the perfect combination. Uh, the character is, as you said, is a lot of people that said, I don't know how can I hate a lot of character at the first steps of the movie and be in love of him at the end of the movie. And exactly. this is a really uh, good work from uh, from the script and really good work from uh, Ramiro and what we we made what we can do to 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 put all together. And, and very smart character interactions to kind of make that happen because there are little things that come up in their interactions that make you kind of warm to him and kind of warm to. This this friendship that is developing that uh, you know, yes, and be, because probably the, the audience stay with the vision of the mad of of the the mother of Marta, no? Mm -hmm. At the first steps of the movie, you are seeing this guy, this guy, this little bit with this kind of uh, of way of talk of how he talk with the girl, and then you think this guy is a strange man, and then in Spain you have another um, problem. Ramiro is very well known to be the bad guy of a TV serial vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, oh. that is a Netflix one. And then, uh, and then everyone says, okay, he is the bad guy <laughs> in Spain. <laughs> then, then plus everything, you have this, no? If Ramiro Blas is going to be the bad guy. <laughs> well, yeah, there, there we go. That, that's a nice kind of like trick of the audience, right? You think he's going to yeah, be the yeah, bad yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah, again, again. There you go. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Um, and one thing I also really like, you know, I love this in horror films. It's something I really noticed. It seemed like the effects here were more prosthetic, more practical. Um, was that something that that you kind of envisioned? Was it was it budget? Like what what was the? How did you come about going to the? Or how did you? Uh, the effects? Uh, my my brother Raúl Cerezo uh, now is a brother. Uh, he hates the VFX. Hated. He hated. He also. I like it very much. <laughs> Being, being working, he been working a lot of time in a quality control for movies, and he has like this eye that he sees everything when it's digital. Even I, I watch it because I'm a, a gamer since I was a child, and I, I detect in a moment uh, when it's digital. Then uh, we decided that uh, we need to go for practical. Uh, the most that we can do practical, there is uh, limits that practical cannot work, but. Uh, we think that all this practical was a good choice, but not good choice for the camera team. Because if I tell you the smell of these things, uh, <laughs> was not the best idea. Uh, but even we, we have uh, 542 uh, shots with uh, VFX, mm -hmm. uh, but invisible ones. Well, you have ones that are not invisible, but you have like all the reflections of the of the sunglasses of Blasco when he's driving in the plateau, uh, the reflection is all the team doing a movie, then all this have to be changed, all the chroma of the, of the windows. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of work, invisible work from User T38, that is the company that made the effects of color out of space. Oh, wow. Then it's, uh, it's uh, people that they are a really good team. And in a the moment they, they made the VFX, we, we was really happy to be as, as invisible as we can. Yes, for sure. Those are the, those are the times when VFX are, are right. Or, or like when there's a scene where there's a night sky and there's like a giant moon. I was like, that's, a, that's, a, that's probably VFX, but it looks very nice. Like it looks, you know, it's yep. like you said, invisible. You can't really tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, I can tell you one thing. The end of the movie... Uh, was shot in uh, in the forest, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, was the last day in the forest, and at the middle of the of, of the night, start to rain like in Vietnam, like oh, in wow. in Forest Gump, crazy from from the from down everything, crazy. We need to cancel everything, and we shot half of this sequence in plateau with green chromas. And now, if you see the sequence, you cannot tell me when is in the what, what parts are in the forest and what parts are in the in the in the plateau. 
That's a uh, crazy good work. That sounds awesome. I will go back and double check, and I'm pretty sure I won't be able to tell. You. <laughs> check, check, check. I just say this one, this one, Fernando. I want so I know we have very limited time. I'm gonna have just a couple quick questions. They're uh, they're lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your personal experiences map to things in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them, but I try to keep them very answerable. Yep. First question is: Do you have any cassette tapes? Ah, yeah. <laughs> I have. I have. I have some. I have some recorded from old girlfriends with a mix of. Uh, with a mix of music. Sure, sure, I have it. I love that. I love that mixtape. Uh, when, if you're going on a road trip, what do you listen to? Do you listen to music? Do you listen to a certain band? Do you listen to like books? What, what, what's, in your, what's on your radio? Well, I'm a, I'm a really chaotic listener. I mean, I, I, I listen from classic music to actual pop, but no reggaeton, but the rest, everything. <laughs> That's it. Um, do you have a name for your car? No, nope. Nope. no name, right. no and, name. And the last question is: Do you like Dua Lipa? <laughs> <laughs> well, some, 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 some fans, yes, some, but not, I'm not quite fan. Marta is a fan, not me. I'm more yeah. nearly, nearly to Blasco. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had some good music too. I really like the music of this. That's film. it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's, it's a point. The, the, the music that is a traditional bullfighting music. We have seven paso dobles that is the name during the movie, mm -hmm. and the mix between the thriller moment or horror moments mixing with this uh, kind of music was a really big surprise for us. Was was in the script, but we add more during the editing uh, process and we are really surprised that it works together no it works great i love having like that, that that strong powerful like music over some of these scenes it really kind of gave it an interesting feel um yep. so the the film is the passenger it comes to theaters on june 3rd 2022 and dvd and on demand on june 28 2022 you can experience that music you can see the practical effects you can see this really interesting relationship develop this is the co-director fernando gonzalez gomez thank you much so much for your time Thank you very much, David. Thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was Fernando Gonzalez Gomez, the co-director of The Passenger, which is coming to American theaters on June 3rd, 2022, and to DVD and on demand on June 28, 2022. It's an indie horror film that has some good practical effects, some interesting characters, and overall tense road trip. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.